Hello everyone. So Z63. That's a Z62. Okay. I had a question and I couldn't get an answer, and then I was getting different um, answers. So I contacted a few people, and this is the best answer. It's from Jeff Neville, Jeffrey Neville. And I would recommend you uh, watch his uh, live stream on Saturday night. It's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. 7 Rocky Mountain Time and then 5 uh, Pacific. But anyway, I was going to have a photo uh, live stream. So, you know, he's going to have some pretty good uh, pictures. But uh, he's very knowledgeable and he gave me an answer to the question I had. And the question was, is this a regular, a partially stacked CMOS sensor, or is it a BSI sensor? So, I've gotten some, well, if it's stacked, it's BSI. Well, I'm looking on some websites that know it's a CMOS image sensor, okay, that's partially stacked. And then I go to the other sites and says, well, it's a conclusion. It has to be BSI. I even went on the Nikon website asking a question. I asked some um, a Nikon um, guy that's very technical that, that's in the Nikon school. I haven't gotten an answer back. It's probably sleeping right now. But uh, anyway, Jeffrey Neville gave me an answer through an email. And I want to share that with you. Okay, this part is um, um, muted for some reason, so I'm going to reread it again. Okay, so I'm attaching a screenshot from an article in a PC magazine for reference, but to cut to the chase, the Z63 is partially stacked CMOS sensor, which is also BSI. They don't call out or this out because by design, it is an improvement of BSI CMOS sensor. What is a BSI sensor versus a non-BSI sensor? The standard CMOS sensor has, is defined as metal wiring below a color filter, which is partially blocks the light being read by a photodiode layer at the bottom of the chip. BSI sensor moves the photodiode layer closer to the color filter, thus increasing the amount of light being captured by photodiodes from 60% to over 90%, resulting in better signal to noise ratio and less noise. Now, a fully stacked or a partially stacked sensor adds additional circuitry, RAM, on the chip itself that dramatically increases readout speeds, which allow the Nikon Z9 to become the world's first mirrorless camera without mechanical shutter, but it still has the photodiodes in the same area as the BSI sensor. It still utilizes the BSI but that is the base architecture that the stacked, partially stacked sensor technology is based on. Hope this answers your uh, question. Nikon does not need to stay partially stacked BSI CMOS sensor because the BSI part is understood as already being there. Now, although the Z63 sensor is partially stacked, it is not as fast as the Z8, Z9 which is why they state it had not approved the minimal rolling shutter, while the Z8, Z9 basically has none. That's from Jeff Neville. And um, shows the uh, thing. It says, uh, quicker readout speed makes fully electronic shutter possible for BSI CMOS models. They talked about the uh, 
faster autofocus response, higher burst rates with autofocus. Uh, Fuji Film X2 or XT3 was the first consumer camera to really take advantage of these features. It had 20 uh, frames per second in 2018. Um, you still need to use a mechanical shutter to reliably uh, free subjects in motion with most BSI CMOS cameras. But the silent electronic shutter comes in handy for portraiture and other still subjects. So, stack CMOS chips improve upon the BSI CMOS concept, all right? Uh, Ultra-fast DRAM memory in the same silicon. Uh, the first one was the Sony A9 in 2019 with the stack CMOS sensor, and it can fire up 20 frames per second without losing your viewer scene. So... That's that, then I should be talking shortly. Um, and I'll mute myself right here. So when I did it, I, I've been having some microphone problems and it did it to me again. So hopefully uh, you heard me uh, talking this time. I kind of read it through it faster than I did previously. So I'll just keep saying some things until I come back on, and then I'll mute myself. But uh, I'm just reading the, uh, I read word for word the first time. I just skimmed through it. But if you can see the, uh, uh, the diagram, it's very good. Basic CMOS, backside illuminate CMOS, and then a stacked CMOS. So you can see what they did. Um, yeah, with wiring, yeah, two layers, okay. That's why it's called a stat. Yeah, I'm just reading the bottom part. Now I should be talking shortly. Go to Selective Imagery live stream. Just put it in your YouTube uh, search. Um, less dynamic range in the Z6 III. You know, less stops or whatever. Uh, Tony uh, Nordstrom did a video on it just a, uh, a day or so ago saying that, uh, you know, uh, another one did some tests and uh, it's not performing as well and stuff like that. I did some tests. I like the dynamic range. Um, I like the 10-bit H.265. I don't deal with the um, the ProRes stuff or uh, the NEV RAW. Um, takes up less space and stuff. I just use it uh, just to show what the camera can do, basically. Um, I'm not too technical in that stuff. I don't like being on the computer much to do editing. Uh, I just record, cut some things out, and then just post it. So, when you put it in HLG mode, uh, the ISO only goes down to 400. It won't go any lower. Okay? 300, 200, 100, 64, whatever. Okay, but if you leave it in SCR, then you can go down lower. And I like that a lot better than uh, the HLG. also like things brighter. So I'm not too much into the dynamic contrast. I'm more into how good the quality of the picture is. Okay, I'm not into photo editing. Okay, I'm not into cropping. Uh, the reason why I got this 26 megapixel camera is to do video. It'll do 6K60. I'll do 4K120 at a crop. 4K60, of course, no crop. And I'll do HD240. Uh, All with sound. 
So I think it's a great camera. 24 and a half megapixel camera is good enough. I got 45 megapixel cameras. Z8, Z9, R5C. I got uh, Leica Q3, which is uh, 60 megapixel. And I'll do 8K video also. So I, I, I don't mind the Z6 III. Uh, this makes sense, this explanation. I know some people, uh, they don't really get into details and they miss some things. And some people were asking me some questions. So this is the information that was given to me. And I'm going to go with it. Uh, I think it's excellent. Uh, thank you, Jeffrey Neville, again, and PC uh, Magazine uh, for the article. Uh, I learned some things. And I'm always learning some things. So... I hope this information is uh, informative to you. Uh, the two previous videos I did on discussion, I'm going to redo because when I was just talking about it, um, I changed the mic because I was showing an uh, unboxing of some batteries that I've ordered for full frame. And I forgot to plug the uh, cable back in. So... I got to redo two videos. Sorry, folks. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Remember, stay safe, keep smiling, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, folks. Have a wonderful day.